Well, hi, I'm here now with Kim McGuinness, who's the Police and Crime Commissioner for the Northumberland Force Area. In fact, Northumbria, I think is probably the way you say it, isn't yeah. it? Thanks for joining us, Kim. Thanks, Matt. It's great, to, it's great to have this chat. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And so this chat, as you'll see, I've got my white ribbon on and we're going to be focusing on the white ribbon campaign, 25th of November, and then 16 days of action thereafter, really highlighting this issue of male violence against women and girls. And uh, I guess the reason why myself as a bloke, I'm having these conversations is to try and create a space in which, you know, men can think more um, about what's going on in the world of women and the to be fair, some of the problems that we create. Uh, and so I guess my first question would be, can you uh, help to put the problem in perspective for us, Kim? I'm thinking in terms of the scale of the problem, the amount of police resources that it demands. What can you tell us about that? Yes, I mean, I think, for, first of all, it's really good that you are doing this. And it's really important that men do talk about it and men are comfortable talking about it and it isn't something that's only talked about in women's circles because otherwise we'll never solve the, solve the problem and I think in terms of the scale of it you know it, it is a really really big part of um, I suppose the criminal profile in, in, in our region and I think the other thing that we have to understand about um, domestic abuse and violence against women and girls is it, it's, it's hugely underreported and so for every case that we know about uh, that there are there are countless others that we won't know about and I think we are getting to a point where we understand the problem better in that uh, I certainly think throughout the pandemic um, and certainly since the death of the horrific murder of Sarah Everard um, we've had much more open honest public conversations on primetime television at times when people are actually watching it and talking about it in families I think that's happening more than it ever has, but I still don't think it's a problem that's deeply understood um, by, by most people. And I think it's a, oh, you know, that won't happen to me or that's not happening in my friendship group. But the, the fact is domestic abuse, uh, violence against women and girls, we're all vulnerable to it. It, it isn't necessarily attached to um, age or class or, um, or, or um, ethnic, uh, background or, or any of those things that often dictate whether we're more or less likely to become a victim of crime it, it, it's it's everywhere mm, it does seem to be a universal and and i suppose um its impact as well is something that as men we probably really don't understand very well at all um you know how it actually feels to be in that situation whether it's to be you know a victim of violence or you know in the sort of you know the language of the uh, the campaign the white ribbon campaign um, just to be, uh, I guess, a, a woman on the receiving end of, of threats of violence or of kind of coercive control and behaviour. What can you tell us about this sort of the way that women experience that and are impacted by it? I think for, for me that the, the, the thing that people think about when they think about domestic abuse, and I, and I still think this is true, even though we've come such a long way, is, you know, they think of a, probably a drunk man who, who hits his wife. And, you know, those are crass terms to talk in, but I think that's what people think about. And I'm not saying that doesn't exist, that, that you know, that is a part of the problem. And I think there's, you know, there's issues attached to alcohol and drugs, substance misuse, and there's issues sadly attached to football and major sporting events and that kind of thing. But what we're talking about here really is a whole spectrum from harassment of women in the street um, and what I would call casual um, or what people think is a casual kind of abuse and you know it might be called banter and and that is the start of it you know it's misogynistic right up to you know what we're talking about far too often which is domestic homicides and the number of women who yeah. are, are murdered by um by men and male partners and everything in between and and sometimes that looks like control and it looks like um you know your 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 movements your communications your phone your job your all of that kind of stuff being controlled. Um, sometimes it looks like um, it, sometimes it looks like psychological abuse and um, you know being belittled or, mm -hmm. or um, talked to in a way that is completely inappropriate. And sometimes it it looks like physical abuse. So women experience this in a, in a, in different ways mm -hmm. depending on the situation. And I think we have to open our minds to, to the scale of, of the issue. And, yeah. you know, certainly one of the things that 
I'm really focused on as Northumbria Police and Crime Commissioner, um, and you know, I know you and I have talked about is getting the right levels of support at every level for victims of this mm -hmm. and making sure that people are able to recognize when they're victims. And one of the things that worries me the most is when I have conversations with young girls, you know, 14, 15 year old girls who are clearly in what is already a, a form of a coercive controlling relationship. And it, you know, it's all down to these. Yeah. Um, and they're actually not aware of it because they think it's normal. Yeah. And that's what we've got to deal with. We've got to educate yeah. boys yeah. and girls, men and women about this. Yeah, yeah. And so in that vein then, Kim, um, I know that, you know, from your office and working with the Northumbria Force uh, and indeed with lots of partners in the community, you've got all sorts of initiatives going on um, to try and tackle this, come at it from different angles. Maybe you could tell us about some of the things that are going on that you're excited about or that seem to be, you know, making uh, good progress on this on this matter. I'm not going to list it all off because we'd be here all day, mm. but there's some, there are some really, really good things happening in Northumbria. And I think the important thing about this region, and I think this goes for this issue, it goes for crime, it goes for personal safety, but it also goes for everything else, business, industry, politics, the rest of it. You know, we are quite an innovative place. People want to do things differently and to try new things. And I think we want to pioneer approaches to this that actually make a difference to the problem. And the, the will across the board in Northumbria to do that is brilliant. And, and I couldn't speak more highly of that. Um, but I think if we start to think about, you know, little children, children in school and, and people throughout education, you know, we have educational inputs through an education team from my office about appropriate relationships um, you know how to manage your feelings what what a coercive controlling relationship might look like what domestic abuse might manifest itself as and those are age appropriate at every key stage and available in every school right across the region and that was kicked off by Vera some years ago and now you know schools are able to deliver that themselves and I think that culture in the region is, is really important. I think on the absolute opposite end of the scale, we're also doing some really good work with perpetrators. So making sure we understand who are the high risk, high harm perpetrators, as, as they're called, I suppose, in the business, if you like. But essentially the ones who move from family to family and re-offend and re-offend and re-offend and whose offending is dangerous and, and, and frightening. You could say it's all dangerous and frightening, but the ones who we yeah. know about and we, we need to stop. And doing some work to break that cycle because actually so often the system has moved um, perpetrators on and moved them on so that they can re-offend. Yeah. And then I think the other thing that's really worth mentioning, we have got a fantastic third sector, you know, ch loads of charities and, um, and, and organizations in our region who are real specialists in this. And we commission them to provide really good victim services, really good support services for um, for, for women who are experiencing violence and abuse and, and all of those things. Um, and we continue to work together. So it's not that, you know, we, we fund this one in Sunderland and this one in North Tyneside and this one in Newcastle, we do that. But actually we also bring them together. And the pandemic again was a really good example of that where we were very concerned about women being trapped at home with perpetrators, yeah. you know, unable to take their usual es escape routes if you like. Um, and so the sector came together to do an eyes and ears campaign to say, you know, if you know something about it, tell us about it. And mm. that's when we're going to be able to help. So mm. that's a snapshot. But mm. there is so much work going on yeah. in this area. Yeah. And I am very proud of the response. However, I do think it's important to say that despite all this, the prosecution rate isn't high enough. There are still far too many abusers who manage to get away with this sort of mm. crime and the system therefore fails women too often and we've got to keep our foot on the gas yeah yeah absolutely right um just finally then uh, i wonder in terms of perhaps people who may be listening and and i look you know it's been incredibly informative all that you've told us i wonder if just in terms of bringing it down to a practical level for sort of men in their sort of everyday lives um I guess we, you know, we sometimes find ourselves in those situations, um, maybe where, um, 
you know, we might be able to make a difference in the way that somebody is thinking or talking or acting. Maybe we're on the metro and somebody's being harassed or somebody's acting um, in an inappropriate way. Or um, I think there's that sort of, uh, you know, your heart's beating, you're wondering, you know, is this, should I be saying something now? Should I get, should I get involved? Should I stay out of it? What, what do we do? I mean, have, have you ever kind of, you know, come across any good advice about what men can do in those situations? Uh, I guess the last thing you want to do is kind of front up to some fellow who's kind of, you know, giving a woman a hard time, but are, are there things that can be done? Who should, who should we call or what should we do? I mean, obviously it's really important that you keep yourself safe and that goes for men or women. Don't make a decision, you know, don't put yourself in immediate danger by, by confronting somebody who seems dangerous. I, I think anyone would tell you that, but mm. at the same time, it, I think sometimes it's not necessarily about that, you know, that flashpoint where you're seeing violence in action. And in which case you ring 999, you know, you do what you have to do and, and report it and make sure that that woman, that victim gets the help that she needs as quickly as possible. But I think it's much more fundamental than that. You know, sometimes it has to be about addressing your own behaviours and thinking, right, well, that thing that I said or I thought, is that misogynistic? Is it sexist? And do I need to address that and, and really stop doing it? You know, it's about not necessarily accepting, you know, the banter or the inappropriate jokes in your friendship circle and challenging some of that, whether that be, like I say, your friends or um, mm. work or the pub or, or, or whatever, online, you know, it could be. And I think sometimes it is about that, um, almost that relationship with women and being able to say, you know, what can I do? Because it's different for different groups of women. It's different for different individuals. And I sometimes think some of the most powerful conversations that I've had recently about this, you know, the, 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 the now renewed and I think really strong and really positive conversation about violence against women and girls and particularly in public spaces is men saying, well, what do I need to do? And there's not one answer, but, you know, potentially ask women and generally will tell you. Yeah, that's right. And, and I think that, you know, that's why I'm really pleased with the, uh, you know, the way the White, white Ribbon campaign's gone about it this year. They kind of flipped yeah. that sort of not all men thing on its head and, um, you know, with their all men can hashtag and uh, yeah, all men can be part of a solution to this. Um, you know, we, uh, yeah, and I guess that's the invitation that we're offering people today. Great. Yeah, thank you, and I, I think that's great. I think that's really brilliant. Yeah, so thanks thank you. for your time. Thanks ever so much. Thank you.